Hello guys, how are you? Now today we are talking about common rail injectors. Uh, more specifically, 1.3, 1.6, 1.9 and 2.4 liters multi-jet engines. Now for the for the 2 liter engine, it's basically the same as the 1.9 liter engine. Uh, so the, the same principles apply. Let's, let's uh, get to it. How do we know, how the injector knows, how the unit knows, what is the compens compensation or return uh, of the, each injector? Um, how how the, this, this system works? And we, uh, we are able to do this diagnosis without opening your hood or your bonnet. Because um, with the diagnosis machine, we can do all of that. But first, let me just give you here an insight of how does this system work? I actually am going to do a video just for the principles of working of the high pressure system of common rail. But um, basically you, you have here a ramp uh, where you have the high pressure diesel accumulated and waiting for the injectors to, to open. This opening is commanded by the, the ECU, by these two wires in, on each of the, the injectors. And it is the unit that decides when to open the injector. The closing of the injector on this model of injectors is assured by this internal spring of the injectors. On other models and uh, mixing models, if you have piezoelectric uh, injectors, like on the, the Continental or the Delphi systems, the, you have an impulse to open and you have another impulse to close the injector. So it's very it's a little bit different from these injectors. This, for me, is more safe than the other injectors. So how th does this work? How th does the unit know? You surely, surely uh, heard about the return of the injectors, how important it is. How does the unit know uh, what is the return of the injectors? Now, naturally, it, it does not exist a sensor or a unit to measure the, the, the return of each injector or any, because if you, if you can see, they are in series. Uh, forget about that. What you have here is a series of combination of sensors and the management of the ECU. Now, how does this really work? Uh, in order to maintain a certain level of pollution, you have to, to comply with regulations, the, the modern engines have to uh, evolve over time and adapt to the wear of, en of the engine. If the engine on the inside loses compression or loses efficiency, the management system has to be capable to cope with that change. Now, let's focus here on the, the injector number one. Um, you have a problem with this injector. You, the car does not start or starts very rough, and uh, you can see on the diagnosis that this injector, for example, has a high level of return of uh, the diesel that escapes the, the, the injector. And uh, uh, you switch this injector, you put a new one, and the car is the same. Okay, how can this, that happen? Uh, when you have, let's imagine here, the, the car running at idle, and every time you have a pulse of, in, of injection on each of, of the injectors, you, the, the uh, ECU is expecting a certain amount of torque. That torque, that, that, uh, that increase, micro increase in velocity of the flywheel of the crankshaft is measured by the sensor, the RPM sensor uh, down there, naturally. That information is sent to the ECU. Now, the ECU has to decode how much torque it was applied by, by each of the injectors um, and they are controlled individually. And it compares the wave that should be forming when that uh, injection is performed, and it compares with what is actually happening. And if it, what is happening is lower than it should be, it has a compensation of that injector. Okay? That is how the unit realizes it, that it has to, to make some compensations on the injectors. So how can we uh, diagnose this problem without spending a lot of money? So remember, we, we have a problem on cylinder num number one, and we 
switch around this injector to another position and we have to recode the position of the injectors. If the, the problem follows the injector, let's imagine here number three, if the problem follows the injector, the problem is indeed the injector. In this way, you can always make sure even your new, new injector, it's bad. Okay, and we have to apply a warranty. Now, if the, the problem persists on cylinder number one, you can have lack of compression of the engine. And that can happen of, uh, uh, in several ways, two at least. One of them has to be with the, the, the wear of the piston in, in the in piston rings, and then I'll leave you a link up here for that video. I already have one. And the other problem, more common, is the, the, the sludge that is in the intake manifold because of the, the EGR valve. I know, I know, it's bad for that, but it, it, it is there for a reason. That sludge comes down through the intake valves, and the, on the intake valve seals, it becomes pitted, and it cannot um, hold the compression, thus making a correction on the injector. Now, as I always say on the diagnosis, ignition on, on the diagnosis, you don't want just to see the, the fault codes. The fault codes are the least of your concerns. What I always say, or uh, models, is you, you have to see the parameters. You have to see the actual data, the live data that the car tells you. So on this car here, what is usual, usually very common is to the high pressure system of the fuel uh, system loses pressure during the start of the car. Well, let me see here if I can uh, enter on the ECU, the engine. Now, what I want to see is not the faults. I don't have, have any faults. Fault codes, no faults. And th this is not like the <laughs> airbag um, video. What you want to see is actual data. This is, uh, says in Portugal, that uh, that's at it says um, live data in English. Sorry, I don't want to press that one. Okay, let's wait a bit. Now, like I always say on my videos about the multi-jet engines, you, d you indeed need a very good battery and an excellent starter motor. So you need a lot of cranking power so the system can recognize the minimum RPM for starting the engine. I cannot lower this, okay. So, what do we have to see here is the correction of cylinders 1 through 4 and the fuel pressure, what it should be and what it is actually on the live data. So, I will crank my car my, my engine, and I have to see an increase of diesel pressure equal to this um, main objective pressure. Also, I have to see those, these numbers here. Let's see what's what. So, starting the engine, and I have here the same pressure that it should be, and I have a correction on cylinders number one through four, 124 or 150, 070, 020, 091. Now, what do you want to do, to do is to take that, this test at cold and when you have that symptom, the symptom may be the car doesn't cr uh, crank, sorry, the car cranks a lot and it, it, and it does not start and when it does start, a lot of white smoke can, comes out of the exhaust. What is th th these numbers here? The, the numbers are the correction of the cylinders, of the, the, the injectors, and the most what you want to see here is around 0 0.25, or uh, at, at maximum 0 and a half. If you have more than this that I have on cylinder number one and four, I have to check out this and this one. So, how can I do this? I can switch around the three and the four, and I can switch around the one and the two, program it, and 
if the symptom, if this symptom uh, number two becomes with 130 and, and uh, the one with zero, zero 050, and this the same, 003 and 083 in here, I, did, I do have a problem with the injectors. If not, if the problem persists on one in four, I have a problem with the engine. If you have a value of 2.25, it's really, really bad. Uh, from that, that point beyond, you cannot start your car. It's very difficult to start your car. Because if you lose pressure while you are, you are cranking your car, you are, if you are losing pressure by the injectors, nozzles for example, this pressure here cannot increase until the, the objective uh, value. And if this value is, does not match this value here, the, the control unit will never open the injectors for combustion. These are, are the, code, the codes for the injectors of my car. This one is the, the driving belt, the, the time belt, timing belt, I'm sorry. Scythe, this is the gearbox scythe. And I have one through four for the codes. Now, the codes are very important. Uh, for se several reasons, but you have to check some, some things. Uh, if you are switching around the injectors uh, from 1 to 2 or 3 to 4, like I said on, on the previous clip, you have to uh, change also on the coding of the ECU. This is inside of the ECU. You have to change these codes. Now, what are these codes actually? Why does the injector has codes? When the, the injector is being built, there are some tolerances on the injector that, that have, uh, I mean, all the injectors are different because we are dealing with a lot of very small parts. So each injector has a, a, an identity. And if you are um, repairing the injectors, if you are switching the internal parts, the code can never be the same. If an injector is repaired, the internals are different, thus the code must be different. So, make sure the, the injectors, first of all, make sure the injectors that are uh, assembled on your engine correspond to the coding on the ECU, because a lot of times people change injectors and they, they forget to code or they, they cannot code the injectors, and you may have a similar symptom of uh, bad injectors when they are checking for the, um, the, the parameters on the return uh, amount. So make sure you have the perfect uh, injector coding. And if you are switching the injectors, you have to switch inside the ECU the position. And you have, if you are assembling new injectors, you have to make sure that that code really coincides with the, the the coding of the inside of the, in the injector or the, the identity of the injector. I hope you like it. Please share with your friends, consider subscribe and hit the like button. Bye.